Hey, what's up guys, it's Tip. Recently I sat down with Professor Knox from Hearthstone and we had an interesting conversation about Classic WoW. So I hope you guys enjoy and see you soon. Yeah, it's, it's something that I've been playing on and off, I'd say since Cataclysm. It's not a game that I've really put much time into since that expansion had come out. But prior to that, I was almost no lifing the game uh, all the way through. Up until Cataclysm. And that's a common theme I hear from a lot of people. But it's my story is a little bit weird because I mean late Wrath of the Lich King I sort of stopped playing the game as you know after Ulduar I think I stopped playing the Trial of Champions just wasn't for me uh, I didn't even experience ICC you know when it was current so I had done Ulduar hard modes and whatnot but I didn't even touch ICC which I still regret to this day because I hear the expansion was actually pretty good barring the fact that we were stuck on it for months the um, the cataclysm, what ended up happening is I, I made some questionable decisions with my in-game gold and my account got banned. So I just decided at that point, uh, I am not going to return to, you know, to, to playing the game seriously as I had lost the characters that I cared for the most at the time. Okay, so it was a yeah. little bit of a, an external and an external reason, basically. <laughs> it's, it's a bit of both, yeah. You know, when you stop caring about the game, you, you make questionable decisions with, you know, your account. So that's pretty much what ended up happening. <laughs> Well, not um, a good move. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, you bring up a good point, and it's uh, when you stop caring about something, you make some questionable decisions. But uh, recently, it seems like people started caring about the older versions of the game, and as a result, it seems like a big community decision was made to lobby for this, which ultimately led to the BlizzCon announcement. Where were you at the time, and what were you thinking when you heard the news? So I was just streaming. My, I think I might have even been like streaming a boring fishing stream of me in world of warcraft just talking to my chat and randomly the news comes out and uh yeah i have to just pause everything i'm doing to talk about it and immediately i start thinking about all the possibilities what it means uh, the conflicts that come up all the debates that are going to be had over you know what it means to have a classic experience i made some rumination videos afterwards trying to clarify my own thoughts because i had a you know I, I like game design a lot so i wanted to look at it from the perspective of game design what the devs had been trying to do when they set out to make world of warcraft initially and then filter that you know through what i experience in the game initially and out of it I think came out a few salient points which resonated with a lot of people that let it you know let me know that they they thought the videos were somewhat helpful um, but I think there's an essence to vanilla wow uh, at the end of the day that I, I just couldn't help but talk about when I heard about the announcement absolutely and your rumination series honestly it's one of the best I actually linked it in my discord yesterday and I got so much positive feedback about it um, Basically, in that series, you break down a variety of different topics. You break down WoW Classic, you talk about hybrid tax and stuff like that. If you were to, I guess, summarize what made Classic WoW so great or what made Vanilla WoW so great back in the day, what are the top couple of points that you think distinguished it from the rest of the expansions? Well, the first one would be that they set out to create a world, right? Not a game. Uh, and I, I say this in, you know, very broad, with very broad strokes, I guess I'm painting this picture because they created a world with non-linear quests that really didn't seem like they were engineered right like it seems like the questing in world of warcraft since at the very least late burning crusade and into wrath of the lich king and onwards the questing was if not linear at least engineered you could tell that they had a path for you to follow certain zones you would enter at a certain time uh, and it didn't feel as organic as classic wow or vanilla wow as we we know it did so that was one of the things that that really struck me was world of warcraft classic was a world primarily a world and it didn't really care for you as a player it didn't really care that you got good gear it didn't care that you became strong you had to try to make your way through that world and then find your place whether it didn't, if that meant you were going to dance on a mailbox or you know just stop your 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 adventure dressed in greens and blues that was going to be it so the world creation was big and i would say of course the community aspect which ties into the world a little bit because people are forced to carve their own place in it as a result of that you get of course outliers at the top and the bottom you know the most infamous and the most famous players on given servers um people who do extremely you know i would say elaborate things like kiting kazakh to a city it's like yeah this is something people remember um now it may not have been intended but it's emergence like the community sort of 
has these iconic players within it that reinforces the sense of, of community. And I'd say the third point was the idea of dungeons as uh, hostile places. I think that's one of the things that Classic did very well that Legion also has, you know, it has very difficult dungeons. Let's not kid ourselves. Like the PvE content of Legion taken into its extreme is extremely challenging. Like it's very challenging, but it's also very it feels very engineered, right? Like it's created to be challenging in that way by, you know, implementing purposely difficult mechanics to navigate around. Whereas Classic Qua was more the case that you were just under geared and it didn't matter where you were going, the odds were you were going to die to the thing that was there because it was it just had bigger numbers than you. So it was a simpler type of difficulty, but it felt just as real in terms of, you know, its impact on you as a player. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's that world environment it's that experience a real or a real world experience versus a game simulation that a lot of people talk about um and you know it's it's something that i'm sure a lot of people such as yourself miss but you brought up a good point about community for a second and um community is something that we've heard ian has Acostas bring up in a couple of interviews about classic we've heard jay allen brack uh, vice president executive producer bring it up what do you think is missing from the community today that was present back in vanilla? Well, that's a tough thing to say because if you're within a guild of like-minded people on, on even on current lead, hmm. isn't anything missing? An example I like to give is that the hardcore raiders back in vanilla WoW and the hardcore raiders nowadays, I mean, yes, their in-game routine may have changed a little bit, but for the most part, they're still interacting with like-minded, highly talented players pushing the content to its extreme. So for them, the community hasn't really changed. What's really changing is sort of at, at a base level. You know, the day-to-day -day experience of a casual player does not involve a community, right? You can log on, you can do your daily quests, you know, I'm sorry, world quests, same thing, really. Uh, you get the gold, um, you get your reputation grinds at a set pace that you can't accelerate and you know beyond uh, you can click lfr lfd all these convenient features um which is interesting because i feel like in recent times just to go on a bit of a tangent uh, in the public discourse there's a lot more discussions about the negative side of convenience you know there are negatives to convenience and i feel like world of warcraft had to experience that for itself before it decided to dial it back or you know the community is sort of reeling back from the sheer amount of convenience at some point it becomes too much to be to be pleasant and being handheld only goes so far. At some point you sort of want to have a feeling of agency within the game. And I would say that this is what current WoW is missing is that the community is diluted, but I mean, you didn't even need to interact with people in vanilla WoW. Like, I mean, you did if you wanted to raid or do, you know, five man dungeons, um, but you could easily just grind your Timber Maw reputation to Exalted solo, do Battlegrounds solo, farm Thorium Ore solo, craft stuff solo, buy recipes solo, buy carries in raids. If you wanted to buy a spot that was doable, even though people may not be too familiar with the practice back in the days, it's like all those things were doable. But at the end of the day, you were still a known entity on your server and you had at least some people you you, you know some connections to the people on your server absolutely absolutely and it's those connections that a lot of people are hungry for and um you know it's funny that you that you talk about i guess you can solo the game which is a misconception like you said a lot of people think you can't it's uh you very much can solo play in uh, in vanilla but it's much more meaningful when you play with a group of people and um it's this community, these driving groups that have helped forge this memory, this love and passion for the game. And as you said, it's the it's the conveniences that have sort of pushed the industry to, I guess, uh, the opposite side of the spectrum. And it seems like the entire industry now is pulling back. You have OSRS, you have Rift Prime or whatever. It's going back to its roots as well. Do you see Classic WoW sort of creating a tidal wave in the industry, pulling everything back to less convenience, more social interaction? I guess it depends on its success, right? Because this is, of course, like gaming as a as a as a human activity is, is fairly young, right? Like it's old as far as we're concerned, because we were born in it mm -hmm. and molded and shaped by it. But it's a fairly young thing. So we're finally starting to see the first waves of quote unquote nostalgia 
kicking in. It's already happened before, you know, with the hype of retro gaming and then, you know, old people that we'd qualify as old, you know, they're like 50, they're like, man, I played this when I was 25. The, these old games on Atari and whatnot, they're now playable in other simu like emulators. And they're like, there was a hype for retro gaming and it's still somewhat ongoing, but it's mostly fading. What's happening now is that what we consider old games that were fairly modern by retro gaming standards are now the retro games and Classic WoW is a part of them. Now it's part of the gaming legacy in a way and so this might just be another one of these manifestations of oh a generation wants it's at retro gaming time which that might just be what it is and it doesn't it's going to have a tidal wave effect on the the design of new games but you know there's been a, an uptick in the stuff like roguelikes games you know like the roguelites maybe where people have you know very difficult challenges games like dark souls have a core audience so there's a demand for inconvenient games and i i don't see that disappearing and there's a chance that after people see how successful classic wow is if it is that they'll try to uh, i wouldn't say fail at designing like it but at least attempt to replicate some of the the design philosophies that it embraced right because the, the modern wow is no longer the same game and if you're using it as a model to develop your own mmo um, you're really just borrowing from a ton of other of other games and their practices because that's what WoW did. It saw successful practices in other game genres and tried to incorporate them, and that's how you get to an over-engineered experience of the of the world of Warcraft, basically. I actually really like that term, over-engineered. It's like it so perfectly defines what we have in today's game. It's like an over-engineered, manufactured byproduct. Everything feels like it's systematic. Nothing feels like it's an organic world. It all feels like you're going from one queue to another, from one instance to another. Yeah, I mean, an example I, I like to point to that, well, it's a personal anecdote, but like I was a level 14 warlock on the first character I rolled, and I still remember that to this day. And I did not have an imp nor a void walker, and I had no idea. People would choose to play warlock i was like this this seems like a potato class like i can't do anything with this i'm a weak mage i can't self-heal i'm getting like i'm just getting pummeled in melee and this could not happen in current wow it literally could not happen it's not even a possibility it's not on the spectrum of things that could happen and so that's the interesting part is that the sense of discovery that also comes from the, the the creation of a world and you sort of let it be that's a part of it that, that disappears but not to take away you know the the fantasy of classic wow and how great it was but when you talk to a new player of current wow like you take somebody who's new to legion they've never played wow before and you introduce them to the game they actually feel somewhat what we felt when we first got into Classic WoW, when you, you know, the initial days where they create a character, it's got a race, it's got a class, there's a fantasy that goes with that, they get new spells, new abilities, they slay monsters, they go into dungeons, it's like, that experience is still real for new players. I just feel like for the casual player that's been there for a while, the game is no longer as engaging. Do you think that with that layer gone, that layer of new experience and wonder do you think classic wow has long-term potential or do you think it's something that's going to come onto the scene a couple of months and then fade out dramatically i'm hoping that there's enough new blood that there are still people coming in and discovering the world as it is because it's actually quite helpful if you're an old school player of a game or at least it's pleasant if you're an old school player of a game to assist a new player in discovering it right you're you're telling them Oh, you don't have the title charm trinket? Well, how about you go camp that mob so you can get it and, and get that stun ability? Or you don't know how to DPS as a hunter? Well, let me help you out with that raptor strike rotation. Like, there's a lot of really weird, quirky things that you can teach people. And I'm, I'm hoping that the amount of people that join in isn't just the classic, the private server crowd, because at the end of the day, they're already playing on private servers. Yes, you can point to the drama and say, you know, this isn't working. Uh, this is, the, the, the characters can be taken at any time, but any player who plays on these servers knows that implicitly. But if they want the legitimate experience on a, on a real Blizzard server, there has to be more than just the same game. And uh, I think a large chunk of it, and I don't mean content-wise, of course, I'm just talking about the, the way you approach the game. And I, I think one of those salient points could be just new players you interact with new players you have a guild of unknowns that are learning and you're teaching them how this goes i think there's a there's a huge chance that the game explodes again like it revived like it's completely revived um from scratch 
And that classic WoW maybe doesn't exceed Legion numbers, right? Because that's probably a big stretch. Um, but at least gets more people in the initial wave interested in classic WoW than people are currently playing WoW. Because there's going to be a lot of returning people from that have simply completely abandoned the product. And uh, they might not stick around, but there will be at least an initial surge that, that will be crazy. From your own personal circles, friends, family, etc., how many people do you know that have long forgotten the game that are making a return for Classic WoW? So interestingly, I don't really, I've never really played uh, Classic WoW with one one real life friend that played it with me. But you know, I quickly started raiding and PvPing at high levels, and they didn't really follow suit. So no, no one I know is going to be like it, from real life, quote unquote, is going to be looking forward to the return of that but when it comes to the people that i've kept in touch online um i mean that's that's countless people i can't even you know count the number of them that have simply left the product or don't play it as much or don't care enough about the content anymore and if only for myself you know it's a game i may not go back into classic wow as hardcore as i did when i when it first came out in fact i don't think i realistically can given my obligations at this point in time but the the number of people that I've heard get excited over the potential to relive some of the fantasy is is really high. Like it's really it's really impressive how many people just seems seem to care about this. Is it enough for uh, Knox to start streaming classic when it comes out? I don't know, man. Like one of the things that happens with games like classic is that once you get sucked in them, um, you're you're never. Sp- Pad out like you just you can't escape right it's a it's a never-ending spiral of if i do this then i sacrifice the rest um which means there's going to be a lot of things sort of dying off as i as i commit to classic wow if i do um i do plan to you know play the game i don't know that i can abandon the whole of what i'm doing these days for classic wow but you know you have to understand too um i i've played on private servers since wrath of the lich king on vanilla classic servers and or private servers they used to be very bad they're now pretty good i i have multiple characters in tier 2 tier 2.5 tier 3 like i've done my fair share of classic wow let's just put it that way and i have and i even back when vanilla was a real thing um i i didn't not explore the content you know i was i didn't clear an axe but i i was for like far enough into it that i i can say i've experienced high-end rating um i i had my own rank 13 character that never made it to the top i've put ungodly amounts of hours playing the game so it's it's nice to see that at least we're getting an official version of this but i don't see myself committing to getting into Nax again like i don't think that's happening like on, on any level where because people need to understand the amount of time that that's involved here we're we're, to, we're not talking about molten core we're not talking about gearing yourself up in five man ubrs you know it's not a um you know it's it's not a, a simple thing to get into next it just isn't so i don't i don't see myself half-assing it um so i don't know that i could play it casually i got you i got you it sounds like you need a new challenge a new game like classic wow with similar design philosophies but maybe with some of the modern technology and innovations we've seen today do you think an mmo like that is on the horizon or could be catalyzed from the resurgence of classic or do you think that's an unlikely possibility I think creating a world that is going to feel as appealing as the Warcraft universe is going to be very difficult because the Warcraft universe builds on an existing creation, which was, of course, well, Warcraft 1, Warcraft 2, and, of course, Warcraft 3. If it had not been for Warcraft 3, I am 99... Well, okay, wait, I'm not going to go that far. 90% confident World of Warcraft um, would not have exploded the way that it did. Um, Warcraft 2 was a great game, but the span between it and World of Warcraft was wide enough that perhaps WoW would not have exploded. But Warcraft 3 was current, mostly when World of Warcraft came out. And in fact, you know, Warcraft 3 was it's still played to this day and might even be slated for uh, rebranding or like an HD remake, which is kind of cool. So if you look at the, the, the legacy of World of Warcraft, there's more behind it than just oh, it's a good MMO with good mechanics. That's not quite it. There's a lot more to it. And so unless 
some developer comes out with their own spin, like their own MMO spin on an existing franchise that's as beloved and as well rooted in the gaming scene as Warcraft had been before World of Warcraft. I I don't see it happening necessarily, but there are good games on the horizon. You know, stuff like Camelot Unchained, which is uh, you know it's looking really sweet. Um, there's Crowfall, which also following the same um, you know same design ideas, hardcore community driven uh, MMORPGs with you know very in depth crafting systems, community driven cities even. Um, you you are the one building the city, like quite quite literally, it's a world that you are constructing online. So there might be a demand for this that overlaps with classic WoWs, but I, I don't think that most classic WoW players are longing for a game like Camelot Unchained. Um, there might be a segment of them where there's an overlap because they've played both titles, like the the old school DAOC, but I, I don't think an MMO coming out now would necessarily work because it's trying to borrow from the classic hype. I, I definitely agree with that assessment, but let's dial it uh, back for a second because we haven't really talked about a point that I think a lot of people want to hear your opinion on. So we talk about classic WoW, we talk about, you know, the vanilla experience. Obviously that changed dramatically from patch 1.1 1 .1 to 1.12. And oh, I see where this is going. <laughs> so there's been a, a pervasive conversation or a debate in the community the past couple of months regarding which version of classic WoW we should receive, patch 1.1, 1 .1, patch 1.12, or something in between. Do you have an opinion one way or the other? Have you been following this debate? Well, I've been, I, I sort of anticipated the debate, right? Which is why the ruminations came in so closely, so soon after the announcement had been made by Blizzard. Is It was obvious to me that no one would settle immediately on a consensus because um, the game had just evolved. And, you know, I think this is one of the cool things about MMORPGs is there are constant iterations on a product that already exists, right? It's like, here's this vanilla WoW. Like, so I'm going to take an example that I remember very, very closely. It's close to my heart because it caused me the most atrocious pain, um, which is Shaman's Earthbind Totem at zero cooldown, zero second cooldown. Like, do you not know what the implications are for this? Like, if that's a thing in game, your life is pain and misery. Like, I can't express how bad that that type of design was at the time, but it was changed, you know, very quickly afterwards. And so my question is, do we want to go back to a zero cooldown Earthbind totem? Like, I, I don't think anybody wants that. So there were improvements. I wouldn't call them objective improvements because I'm pretty sure shamans at the time were like, well, that seems like a biased thing to do. Take out my Earthbind totem. But as time passed, Blizzard got better with figuring out a balance to strike between classes in terms of their... Um, their viability in different domains, of course, because you can't be viable in everything unless you're a warrior or a rogue. It seems like most, or a mage, I guess, most of the Blizzard design was really just about fixing the initial broken concept that they had. And so 1.12, um, you could argue, is the most balanced patch in terms of, that, that we've seen from Classic, in terms of what the game got to. But it certainly isn't the most interesting that it could have been, right? Like, one of the examples that I personally like to go to is, for instance, Fury Warriors, right? Like, they got, they became a very good DPS spec. They weren't always a very good DPS spec. Now, as a class that is mandatory for tanking, um, and that gets a raid spot already, no matter what, and as a class that is arguably one of the best PvP classes out there, um, did they need to have the single best DPS spec in the game as well? You know, that's a question I... I think it's a legitimate question, because sure, you can say, well, they had it, so let's implement it. Well, that's not my point. My point is, if we dialed their DPS down, you know, 8.5%, 8 per, 8 would that shatter Vanilla WoW? Would you say, well, Vanilla WoW is no longer Vanilla WoW? No, I think in my book, I would still take them to raids. They would still make their way into the top of the DPS meters, no doubt. There's no question about that. They might fall behind pure DPS classes a little bit, but they would, you know, still be brought to raids um, on some, you know, for some reasons. And it's interesting because when people say no changes, it encompasses so many little things that I, I think the, you know, the just strict no changes really comes from a place of being afraid of a slippery slope happening, right? Like, it's like, if we let Fury Warriors get dialed down 8.5%, 
Well, what does that mean? Do we start giving Warlocks a tank spec? Um, do rogues get a self-healing? Like, how far do we go down that path? And I, I would just like to see the class fantasy, like some of the pillars of design, be reinforced on. And I think class, class fantasy is a big one. And the numbers don't always reflect that in Vanilla WoW, sadly. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So if Mike Morheim were to pick up the phone right now, you look at your cell, he's calling you, and he says, Knox, I'm retiring. I'm promoting you to CEO. Do what you will with the company. How would you release Classic? A 1-1, one, one, a one twelve one, something between? Would you tune things? I know you've got a little bit of issues with the PvP system, as I think most people do. Uh, back and forth on that. <laughs> not most people, but mo a lot of people do, yeah, but not most. Um, what, is, yeah. what is Classic WoW in Knox's image? How does that look like? Well, in my mind, it's a product that doesn't stay at 1.12.1 .1 for 10 years, right? Like in my book, in a perfect world, I think Classic would get its own, you know, no increase on level cap side progression dungeons. Like if they add a new five man, that would be really cool. But I think 1.12 is a good place to go when it comes to class balance. Now for content releases, that's a different story. You know, I don't want Nax to be there on day one of the server opening, although that probably doesn't make a big difference as far as our ability to clear it. Um, it being there definitely takes away from the feeling of, you know, you want to go through the gates of Ankaraj opening. You want to go through the, you know, the, the plague um, of Nax. You want to go through all these little events and get have the hype be generated the, the the server first also the race happening um so i think that like talent wise i would go with the old ones um the older ones that is even if it means we have to retune god forbid molten core and older dungeons and raids to just be at least as interesting but like i i play in 1.12 servers like a lot of people have and like, yes, UBRS is, you know, it's easier even when you're well geared, but you can still wipe. Like, it, it's not as easy as people make it out to be sure, you know, top tier raiders clear anything with anything. You could give them old talents, new talents. Either way, they'll min max it and not mess up. And either way, they'll clear the content. Um, they might do it faster with newer talents, but I think 1.12 is just, it's a more pleasant world experience as a player because. At least my death coil can get me out of a rogue, yeah. you know, like I can I can survive. It doesn't mean I'm, I'm just sitting there useless. You know, my hunter doesn't feel miserable. I, I can do things. Having extra HP and survival is a big deal. Like there's a lot that goes into the older talents that I think throwing out would be a, a mistake. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've kept you for a little bit too long, but I want to ask you a couple more questions. First sure, no and problem. foremost, as somebody that's been playing vanilla, I guess, since Wrath of the Lich King, basically, and when it was originally released, are there any, I guess, unachieved goals? Um, are there any things you'd like to do this time around? I know you hit rank 13. Would you like to go to rank 14? It's difficult. You're a little bit older now. Are, is there anything left in vanilla that you feel like is a stone unturned? Um, I think there's definitely the whole community building part of it that I haven't done much because I, I was never really, you know, a, a, a guild leader, a raid leader, um, a social, so to speak, in Vanilla WoW. Like, I've never been just the the boring dude. Um, I'd like to, to do some more economy stuff because I did a lot of that in Burning Crusade, you know, like push for... You know, server first, timber maw, and chance, where you can start putting agility on everything, and then suddenly you're rich as hell, and then it snowballs out of control, and you reach gold cap in a vanilla server. Like that's something that I'd like to do. That doesn't take as much time, nearly as much time as you know, raiding at the, the, the highest, cutting edge levels, and it's it's probably feasible on a casual schedule. So that's probably a goal that I'll set for myself. I got pretty close to it, but never quite there back in vanilla. Um, so that's uh, an unaccomplished goal of mine. Well, here's to hope and you accomplish that goal and many others, Knox. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, before we go, uh, any shout outs, any upcoming projects that uh, you might want people to be aware of? Um, nothing on my own part, but uh, big shout out to you guys organizing Classic Cast, your own uh, you know tips, conversations with people. I think that's nice. It's nice to have content in an seemingly 
it, it completely dry for news on Blizzard's side. You know, it keeps people at least engaged with the the idea. It keeps the community talking, keeps them engaged. And I think I think that's a good thing, you know, and revisiting the history like you did with the patch notes, it highlights just how much vanilla wasn't one product, right? Like it wasn't this one monument that you can point to and say oh yeah this this is vanilla it's like no this wasn't vanilla up until uh you know that certain point or this was also supposed to happen in vanilla but it didn't you know what what do we make of that information i think you guys have been doing a really good job um as fun stay safe and you have been boons to this community thank you very much appreciate it and uh we're just following in the footsteps of those that came before us such as yourself i very much appreciate you coming out here at knox um for those of you who may not be aware of Nox, you can follow him on Twitter at col underscore noxious. I believe you're part of the complexity umbrella, right? Yep, I'm a featured streamer on their team and I also uh, represent them at events. Awesome, so you can follow Complexity Gaming as well on Twitter. And of course, Nox uh, slash Professor Nox live on twitch.tv, he streams there and on YouTube slash noxious uh, hearthstone. So thank you very much once again, Nox. Um, it was a pleasure. And uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. If you want to see more of Knox, you can follow him on his social media linked in the description below. I highly recommend you check out his WoW Classic Rumination series. But have a wonderful day, fellas. And as always, tips out, baby.